Hi everyone, this is Angie with another Tech Tuesday and today I'm going to share a little bit about my interest and experience that brought me into the field of UX. So I have pulled up my resume and I'll be glancing over here. I also have my academic transcript up because there are a lot of bits and pieces that really influence my path and interest in the field. So as someone who studied um, in a small liberal arts college where there weren't a lot of different tracks that you could take, uh, say for instance if you go to the Northeast, if you study in the West Coast, there are many specific paths that you can take. And I wasn't even familiar or really formally introduced into HCI or user experience through my studies. It was the activities that I did outside of the program, internships, conferences, um, and just digging deeper into resources that are available online that develop that interest. And, I, and there I was able to lead to different internship opportunities that really honed in those skills, the necessary skills for employment opportunities. So let's start back with as a freshman. When you go to a liberal arts college, you, um, you're free to explore and you don't have to declare what you want to study. A lot of people may have a clear idea. I actually went in wanting to look at um, film and I, w I was interested in doing business, but then I ended up not being really too satisfied with the skills from the business um, the business program and did take a few, I, I was interested, I had background um, doing websites and developing and just messing around with the CSS and stuff, looking at like things from MySpace, Neopets, pet pages, and bringing that into some web development for about 20 clients in high school before college. So even then, I hadn't decided that that's what I wanted to pursue. I saw myself as someone who was, had a business mindset, and so that's a few things that I was considering. Then I took, uh, what you have to do when you, at Berea at least, in, in the liberal arts college, you have to take um, courses that fulfill different requirements in different exploratory places. That means you're going to take classes that you wouldn't have otherwise considered just to get the credit um, for graduation requirements. Um, but of course, if you can, you will want to take classes that fulfill these requirements that um, meet your interests. So I was taking, let me glance over here, let's see, my very first year, I didn't take, uh, let's see, it was a second semester, spring semester, where I took Building Better Apps for a Better World. And this is, re oh, I also took um, Electricity and Electronics. So Electricity and Electronics is a TAD or techno Technology and Applied Design course, and the Better Apps was a computer science course. And so Better Apps was where we had to read um, Rocket Surgery Made Easy by Steve Krug, which is an author that is well recognized in the UX field as an introduction to the studies and the concepts and different ideas. So that book had a big impact on me um, and I was really interested. I was building apps with um, the MIT app, Android app developer. Okay, and then later I did end up uh, deciding that this is what I wanted to pursue. I took more computer science classes, intro to robotics, looking at software design and implementation, and those are all of my introductory level classes. Um, so between my freshman and sophomore year, I ended up take, getting involved with a program called Entrepreneurship for the Public Good, EPG. And EPG had this program where you would go and in... Um, this was really relevant to me and my skill set, social media marketing, helping small businesses claim their Yelp profiles and get online and get people off of the highway and drive up onto their gravel dirt paths. Um, we have small business owners that were writing handwritten receipts using um, non-digital, non-digital, normal cashiers, uh, cash registers. So. Yeah, um, that was a, an amazing experience because it opened up doors where it, as after you finish that summer experience and going to a small rural Kentucky to be able to help people claim their profiles and get online, you are sponsored and have the opportunity to, to do a, uh, a what are they called? 
direct field experience, so a DFE. And so the DFE will sponsor you, even if you want to help and do something in a nonprofit organization, then they can sponsor you, they can sponsor your living expenses, the cost to travel to your destination, um, and it really helps out a lot. And you make some money on top of that. So you are able to save when you get out of that experience. So I was searching and searching and looking for internship opportunities, but didn't, while I had some early programming classes, um, I wasn't able to secure a very strong development position. So then I ended up working as an unpaid intern with a small social media and web development company, Able Engine. This is in Lexington, Kentucky. And now as far as cost, I had all of that really sponsored and taken care of by the EPG program, the Entrepreneurship for the Public Good. And so I was doing front-end web development, learned um, PHP, I was doing HTML and CSS, uh, JavaScript, jQuery, and really developing those skills there. So then, um, let's see, it was, Going back to now we're in my sophomore year, I told you about some of those early classes, but sophomore year I ended up going to um, getting really involved with a women's group, Empowering Women for Global Leadership, and that was a class that I was able to take for credit. Um, I took digital electronics, I think I mentioned that, and I also went to several um, Co conferences. I went to Grace Hopper during this year. I went, I was sponsored, I was awarded the Grace Hopper Scholarship for two years. That would have been spring, yeah, so 2014 and then 2015. So I went in Houston and I went in Phoenix. And there were also some regional conferences that I attended and was able to gain a scholarship. I applied and our school sponsored a lot of girls to go or women to go. Uh, and this is at the first conference is where I learned about the terminology um, for HCI tracks because I was drawn to those courses. Um, even with EPG, I went to a conference. I was always gone. I went to a conference, Ashoka U, which is a social entrepreneurship conference. And there I attended a diversity panel where it was the first time that I'd seen someone who signed uh, to communicate and he had a translator who would uh, and translate the signing and speak into a microphone and it was a really pivotal moment for me because I was building my skills and empathy and um, emotional intelligence and understanding that where these gaps are and we found that people who sign since there's not a universal sign language that they're different um, say there's a, a different sign in Canada can be a Canadian sign language is very different from the American sign language and because of these discrepancies even between our uh, people north in the um, in the north border and us here in, in the United States makes it really difficult to collaborate. Now imagine those differences when you're looking at different hem uh, hemispheres so you're looking at the western and eastern hemisphere it would be really difficult to collaborate and make change for your communities, for the deaf communities and for blind, blind communities. So um, all of these conferences really shaped my understanding and interest in human-centered design and I'd always wanted to be someone who was a technologist who wants to develop with human-centered design concepts and empathy-driven development. And going to these conferences, I also learned about HCI programs and user experience, and that's where I started dial, like dialing in, focusing, and I was able to secure an internship with Travelers as a UX, user experience designer with a small, great team working on um, an internet project for agents. So Travelers is an insurance company. They're a Fortune 500 company, and I was able to... Um, help them and do an eight long eight week long uh experience there in hartford connecticut and that's where i met a few great friends um and it was kind of like your own community because all the interns had housing and we were able to stay in that um in a house together it was like a little um a little sorority house because we had four girls and three of us were in the technology group uh, but yeah it was really fun uh, made a lot of good friends and then after Travelers, 
let's see here. I did, I continued to take more courses. Um, I took advanced digital electronics, um, a graphic class. And then, so after Travelers, I had a, another internship. I did a co-op. Um, so I had a free credit. I had free two credits. And it worked out that I could have taken a GPA booster, something simple, something really easy just to fulfill the two credits of any uh, sort, but I decided to get some valuable skill and then I ended up working at Lexmark, a print company, where I was able to do more user experience research and design. So that role was called usability engineer, someone who crafts these experiences and interaction design. I was wireframing a lot, picked up balsamic, um, but being able to work with an agile-ish team and working very closely with designers uh, through the process. So that's all on my path through the program after Lexmark, or actually during Lexmark, I was starting to job search and was able to, to get work with Nielsen Norman Group. And now we're here. So that's a story. I think that it's a kind of a winding path. Um, but I know many of you were asking about my experience, and I think what I'd recommend for you is to make sure that you craft your own opportunities because no one's really going to hand it to you. You have to reach out and go uh, find those opportunities. Grace Hopper wasn't sponsored by your school. I found that online and I was able to apply um, and get sponsored to go and get a, um, the Grace Hopper scholarship for two consecutive years. And then other opportunities like those internships aren't really well crafted with the program with the school i mean ebg helped but they didn't get me to go to travelers or uh, find the co-op to lexmark so you really have to reach out um and and make those opportunities for yourself and i'm gonna say it's stressful like i cried a lot and there are many times like there's not a professor who had not seen me cry in the cs department and there are times when i walked into the classroom like my eye eyes are puffy and red because I was so overwhelmed and stressed. So um, not to scare you away, you have to f make your own coping mechanisms. Maybe it's going out with friends more. Maybe it's making sure that you have a good support system in your life. And and for me, I was always able to lean on my husband. He was very supportive. If I um, needed to study late, he would even sit um, outside of the computer science lab wait for me and like be on his laptop I was hacking away and trying to figure out how to get the bugs out of my code so yeah a lot of late nights um, but if you have any more specific questions maybe about my experience or if you have any questions about how, what it's like being a woman in tech I'd be happy to answer them in the comments down below thank you so much for watching I know this is a longer video but it's one that I really needed to answer for many of you have been asking about what it's like to study computer science so really appreciate it good luck with everything all right talk to you later bye